Public opinion soundings of all kinds tell us the same thing. Canadians are not only preoccupied with their healthcare system, but worried about both its future viability and sustainability as well. The numbers, after all, are truly frightening as healthcare costs charge ahead Pac-Man-like, eating up all the fiscal capacities of governments at all levels and all stripes. We heard the firing of the starting gun of the public side of the debate on healthcare reform last week at the annual federal, provincial and territorial health ministers meeting in Halifax. And while the end destination is far from clear, and while we're a long way from a consensus on how to move forward, I think it's fair to say move forward we must, and move forward in a way that does more than simply renew the fiscal framework. And that, friends, is where Graham Scott and the Canada Health InfoWay come in. The Canada Health InfoWay is an organization dedicated to the modernization of healthcare in Canada. Their work focuses on contributing to the development of a system that focuses on wellness and effective treatment delivery, caring for the health care issues of an increasingly aging population. It's about a 21st century focus to the assembly and dissemination of patient information. And what seems at first to be a fairly simple task, the creation of a patient-centered electronic record, it turns out to require a complete mind shift in the healthcare continuum. It involves obtaining cooperation and standardization across literally scores of organizations and institutions whose instinct is to act in silos from and not in concert with each other. Graham Scott, the person ultimately responsible for this venture, is one of Canada's top health policy thinkers and leaders. He has a long and truly distinguished career in both public and private sectors. He's been the, former, been the Deputy Minister of Health. He's been responsible for major health care restructuring in over 40 hospitals. He was some time ago Chief of Staff to Robert Stanfield, and he's been the Managing Partner of Macmillan LLP. A member of the Order of Canada, he has served on too many boards to mention, but most recently he was Chair of the Canadian Institute of Health Information. He assumed his present role as Chair of the Board of the Canada Health Infoway in August of last year. And lest you think he's a newcomer to all this technology stuff, he is not. He's actually an early adopter. It was many, many years ago he named his cat Scanner. <laughs> As in Cat Scanner. <laughs> For those of you who are... So Graham, we look forward... <laughs> We look forward to your thoughts on creating effectiveness and sustainability tomorrow out of the chaos which exists today. The Canadian Club podium is yours. Thank you, Jamie. I should point out that uh, CAT scans were a lot cheaper those days, particularly my variety. Um, now, I've known Jamie for a long time. And so I wanted some advice before speaking to this distinguished audience. So I sent him my speech in advance and I said, Can, do you have any advice with regard to delivery? He didn't answer me. So I just cornered him briefly a few moments ago. He said, well, my advice is deliver it anonymously. <laughs> <clears throat> it's perhaps too late for that. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that affects each one of us personally. It affects employers, payers of health care benefits, patients, fathers, mothers, children of, caregiving, uh, of age, caregivers of aging parents. It goes right to the heart of what is most important to us, our health, our well-being, that of ourselves, our families, and our employees. Let me start with a quick story, a true story. In Edmonton, there's a health care group that cares for 11,000 patients using net care Alberta's electronic health record system. Through this system, clinicians have access to almost all of their patients' health information, including test results, medical imaging, and medical histories. A female patient in her 50s sees her physician. It had been just over two years since she'd had her last mammogram. Although there wasn't a reason for her visit related to mammograms, the computer 
when it came on, on her file, signaled the physician that the patient was overdue for her mammogram. In a paper world, a physician said to us, she wouldn't have noticed. But because of the reminder on the computer, the woman left with a requisition for a mammogram. It detected cancer in both breasts, two different cancers, in fact. Fortunately, both were caught early, and five years afterwards, that woman is doing very well. There's a strong interest in creating a system like that nationwide. People want to know if they're getting the right care and they're getting the right value for their tax dollars. With budgets coming under increasing pressure, Canadians want assurances about sustainability and the modernization of the public system. Information is the lifeblood of Canada's health system, yet much of our patient data is still captured on paper. 100 million physician consults a year, half a billion lab and radiology tests, almost 400 million prescriptions. A decade ago, virtually all of these were handwritten. Critical information lay scattered and buried in filing rooms of 40,000 doctor's offices, test centers, hospitals, and clinics. There is very good reason to be worried about that. Health care does not look good on paper, and the more complicated it gets, the less capable paper is of handling it. Paper puts our safety at risk, it wastes money and scarce resources, and it undermines the health care priorities that we have. But that's in the process of changing in this country and around the world forever, which is not to say that the path is always smooth and that there haven't been or won't continue to be bumps in the road. Now, some question, maybe even some in this room, why it's taking so long and costs so much. It's, if it was as simple as putting a computer on every doctor's desk, I can assure you it would have been done already. There certainly is a requirement to have a computer on doctor's desks and on the desks of other key points of care personnel in order that they have the technology to assess patient information. But more important, there's a need for connectivity to make sure that the information can be shared with others who need it to take care of the patient. And it's crucial to have standards that are used so that that information can be correctly interpreted at the other end at crucial moments. And then, of course, there's the software and training to make sure everyone is comfortable using the technology. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So where do things stand today? The good news is that modern IT tools are beginning to make a real difference to healthcare, including here in Ontario. Just down the street, the University Health Network is leading the Connecting GTA initiative, which will enable 700 service providers to share electronic health information covering 47% of Ontario's population. A decade ago, such technology wasn't in view, so there's definite progress being made. As chair <coughs> and with the board of Canada Health InfoWay, I oversee an organization that was launched by Canada's first ministers in 2001 to be the catalyst for accelerating clinical value through the use of information and communication technologies. Working with provinces, territories, and healthcare providers and Canadians, our goal is to transform a 19th century paper system into a safer, more efficient, 21st century system able to use and exchange important clinical information for your benefit. But when we got our start, the core elements were not in place. Everyone knew we needed a health record, but nobody was in agreement as to exactly what a health record was or what it would look like in an electronic form. National standards, a common technical framework, none of that existed. To the extent anyone was doing anything, they were doing their own thing. We still have a very long way to go, but as Sheila Fraser, the Auditor General of Canada, said in her 2009 audit of Canada Health InfoWay, a great deal has been accomplished. Look here in Ontario at telehealth, for example. Telehealth connects patients and healthcare providers who are not in the same place, from video conferencing for mental health consultations to regularly monitoring vital signs at home for people who have chronic health problems. 
Ontario is one of the largest networks in Canada in the world, as does Canada. The impact, just to give you an idea, nationally, the use of telehealth has reduced travel and other benefits valued at $125 million a year in 2010. Even more important, these types of services make a real difference in patients' lives. How? An example would be the Blois family in northern Ontario. They have a two-year-old named Nikki. Now, many of you have driven children who are two years old in the back of your car, maybe for a few minutes. How would you like to do it for eight hours, back and forth, back and forth? And that's what the Blois family was facing following a surgery on Nikki's hand. Instead, they elected to complete their follow-ups via the nearby telehealth site. Heather Blois told us the choice saved time, saved energy, but allowed them to get quality care. Research is also documenting the ben benefits we're getting from the use of health IT. For example, nine out of 10 x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, and other common radiology exams are performed in public hospitals on a filmless basis. Researchers estimate that this has increased radiologist and radiology technician productivity substantially, enabling, get this, 11 million more exams each year. When fully implemented, an independent study estimates benefits savings at about a billion dollars a year. Likewise, drug information systems, which allow authorized clinicians to access, manage, and share patient medication histories generated $436 million in benefits across the country last year, and we still have a long way to go in that area. These numbers are big, but it's the stories warm, that are warm or, in some cases, break your heart, that matter. It's about the man with a stroke who got a treatment that he needed quickly, even though there wasn't anyone in his local hospital who could interpret his CT scan because it was the middle of the night and there was no one available. A woman with diabetes whose doctor had more time to spend discussing her latest lab test results, time that used to be spent chasing down paper reports, now available at the click of a mouse. A senior whose electronic medication profile spoke for him when he couldn't speak and gave the emergency room staff quick access to the information necessary for his urgent care. These aren't wishful scenarios, these are true stories, and there are thousands like them, and they attest to the powerful transformation that's taking place right across this province and the country. But, as the futurist William Gibson said, the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed. Handwritten health records, once described as tradition unsullied by progress, have been around since before Hippocrates, and certainly aren't disappearing fast enough. So I'm impatient. I constantly ask Dick, why aren't we there yet? Probably a little bit like the eight-year-old in the back of the car. <laughs> For all Canadians, not just the lucky ones in some parts of the country that have made faster progress, why can't we all share it? Well, Don Berwick, the director of Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services in the US, and one of the great innovative healthcare thinkers in the, in the world, puts it this way. The reason is because it's hard. Moving from paper legacy systems to modern IT is a big change. New hardware, new skills, new attitudes, new assumptions. It's really, in effect, a new culture, and you just don't get there in one step. Now, some challenges... <coughs> now, that's true. We can't get there in one step or even in a single leap but we obviously have to get there. The results we've seen to date show that health IT can contribute to cost savings or cost avoidance, better access to care, improve quality services, and sustainability of the system. But getting the benefit requires real and substantial change on many levels. Some challenges are technical. We need better tools that fit with and improve clinical workflow. We need bandwidth in remote communities to rapidly transfer large imaging files. We need robust security protocols that protect Canadians' confidential health information, even as smartphone apps and mobile 
medical devices are introduced into healthcare. And there's hard work to be done to make sure the systems are interconnected when they need to be. I could go on, but in fact, the biggest challenges are not technical. For example, protecting privacy is something we address in everything we do. We're fortunate to have Ontario's Information Commissioner with us today, Ann Kavokian. And when it comes to electronic records, there's a very delicate balance that must be maintained between providing access to much needed health information while protecting patient privacy. Anne illustrates this balance approach, balanced approach by the Privacy by Design initiative that she has developed, which has established a new global privacy standard. I'd like to, likewise, e-prescribing can improve safety and efficiency, but not, not if the rules require a physical signature for a drug to be dispensed. Secure messaging and virtual visits can improve access to care and productivity, but if only in-person visits are paid for, they will take much longer to catch on. One in 10 medical residents still says they weren't even exposed to the use of electronic medical records in their clinical training, a gap that we are working to close with the faculties of medicine. We are also working with other faculties, such as the faculties of nurses. But the good news is, <clears throat> so in effect, we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. Commitment to practice improvement from the thousands of clinicians who get up each morning and provide care is essential. We need clinical input at every stage of the process from strategy development to the design of these programs <clears throat> to implement and bring about change management. The alignment of legislation, regulation, policy, and education also matters. And often, for example, legislation and regulation are behind some of the technological changes taking place, which can mean opportunity lost. But the good news is that we're not just a one-way drain on Treasury finances. <clears throat> Added to the productivity gains within the health sector are broader economic benefits. The Conference Board of Canada estimates the investments by Infoway and our partners over a four-year period will stimulate the Canadian economy with a $1.1 billion increase in real gross domestic product. It will also create 10,700 person years of employment and given today's economic uh, situation, we can use every one of those very highly skilled jobs. So the investments are economically sound and for patient care, they're a game changer. In Canada, we're at the crossroads. Thanks to the federal government's leadership on this front and working with the provinces and territories, we have established strong momentum and hit some major milestones. The building blocks for effective IT are now available for half of our citizens. The provinces and territories are working towards having them in place for everyone by 2016. 40% of family doctors have electronic medical records in their offices, a number that we expect to climb to 60 in the next couple of years as our current investments roll out. But 60 is not 100%. So while we're doing a solid job of bringing doctors' offices online, those are not the only points of care that exist. What about the hospitals? Some of their IT systems are old and need replacement. And then there's long-term care, community care, home care. We've just started to test innovations in those areas, but there is obviously so much more to do. Another area where this is true is in terms of the tools that we can offer to value to, that we, that, that, sorry, tools that offer value to us as individuals. Last year, we asked Canadians about the types of innovations in healthcare they would like to see and that they would be most likely to use. Now, I want you to listen carefully because there's a question coming from this. Booking appointments online with their physicians, reviewing prescriptions online, e consults with healthcare providers, viewing their own health information on the internet, such as lab tests and uh, so on. So booking appointments, renewing prescriptions, e-consults, viewing their own health information. Uh, I'd like to see by show of hands how many in the room can do any of these four things today. Great, one. 
that's, that's probably par for the course. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but we would all, I, I won't, ask, well, I can't ask for show. Sure how many would like to have that available to them? Well, that comes as a shock. <laughs> Experience from Europe and the U.S. suggested effective use of these types of innovations for patients can bring dramatic results with reduction in office visits, improvements in management of chronic disease. In these areas and many others, we're looking forward to continuing to work with our government partners and with healthcare leaders, many of whom are in the room today, because they share our commitment to this cause. And we do know, and they know, how much potential this really provides for Canadians and their health. The bottom line is that information and IT are key to improvement and sustainability in healthcare. It makes accountability possible and focuses efforts to transform the health system. As business leaders, I would ask you to be vocal about your support for electronic health records. We live in tight economic times. Governments need you to help them understand what your priorities are within the healthcare system as an employer and a corporate citizen. Investments to transform our health system both locally and nationally deserve and need your continued support. It's a good healthcare decision and a good business proposition. Yes, it will require substantial long-term commitments, leadership, and money. But the benefits in terms of better access to care, quality of care, productivity, sustainability are all crucial. But most important of all is the patient experience is priceless. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur, Monsieur Scott. Uh, vos commentaires sont une uh, inspiration pour nous tous. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's day and age, uh, innovation and leadership are at a premium, and it is in this context that the importance of the Canada Health InfoWay cannot be overstated. Its successful implementation will form... Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Its successful implementation will form the basis of all of the discussions that will take place over the next couple of years on reform. We are, uh, have been privileged to have Mr. Scott speak to us today, and uh, Graham, on behalf of the directors of the Canadian Club of Toronto and everyone in attendance today, I'd like to thank you very much for your comments and wish you the best of luck in the journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Peter and Graham. Thanks for that very insightful speech. I don't know what it says that th this is an innovation, you see. This, this is our new sign. <laughs> I'm not sure on a speech on innovation why the sign, the new sign fell off. But anyway, there you go. Well, this concludes our television programming today. It will be broadcast in the days to come on Rogers. And you can watch it if you'd like to see hear Graham speak again. Uh, as well, we thank Rogers, of course, and 680 News for their uh, very helpful continuing promotion of the club's events. If you're interested in upcoming club events, please go to CanadianClub.org. You'll see everything that we've got uh, planned for the, for the weeks and, and months to come. Thank you very much for being with us today. Lunch is now adjourned.